Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing something a little different. You may notice I don't have any puzzles on the table in front of me. Um, and that's because we're gonna do a tour of my entire puzzle collection. So at the moment, I have most of my puzzles in my spare room, but I do have a few others sort of on a bookshelf next to me and scattered around my lounge room and kind of they're a little bit all over the place. So I figure the best way to go through my collection is by kind of doing a bit of a vlog style point and shoot with my camera phone. That way we can sort of get up close and check out everything in my collection. So I guess grab a snack and follow along as I take you on a bit of a collection tour. So I figured we'd start our puzzle tour off here in this little bookshelf, which is actually a whole connected to a whole bunch of other bookshelves. Um, all my Japanese manga stuff. Anyway, the reason why I'm starting here, it's sort of like humble beginnings. Like when I first moved to this apartment, I think it was 15 or more years ago, I think my puzzle collection at the time pretty much just fit in this bottom shelf. I think maybe a little bit up here. Anyway, there's only about four things here that are from that. Um, there's others that are sort of, I still have, but have moved around and I've decided to put all my Eurographics here for now. Yeah, I think this is all of them. So yeah, we've got a whole bunch of Eurographics. Uh, what is this one? All you knit is love, very cute. And one I did fairly recently, Cozy Cabin, which I quite enjoyed. And then I've got a whole bunch of sort of Japanese ones. I've got the Spring Sakura one, which is really lovely. Um, and then I've got a whole bunch here by the artist uh, Haruyo Morita. And basically this, this, I guess I started collecting their work after I got one as a gift and it kind of spurred on this collecting spree. But yeah, I really like them. Um, anyway, I'm just going to move all the, making a big mess here. But the reason why is because I'm going to get down to some other ones. Oh, okay. So these couple here are from my original collection. I've had them for years and years. And then ugh, this one here is, it's called, um, I think Eintausend Jahre Österreich, which means 1000 years of Austria, I guess. And basically it's a satellite image of Austria. Um, and I think New Kronen Zeitung is like a newspaper there, I believe. So I guess it's sort of put out by a local newspaper. But yeah, basically um, I have relatives in Austria. So I believe they gifted this to me the last time I saw them or even earlier, like maybe when I was even a preteen or something. So I've had it for a quite, a, quite a long time and um, I, I've done it before, but I did it again, I think last year. And yeah, yes, as uh, suspected, it was quite challenging as you can imagine. Um, but yeah, pr pretty cool image. I know it's not my... I guess ideal type of image to do these days. I definitely wouldn't choose something like this, but I guess it has sentimental value. So I don't see it leaving my collection, I guess, ever. So that one, she stays. And then this one, which is really lovely, is a Beauty and the Beast one. It's my jumbo. And again, I've had it for years and I don't know if I bought it or if someone gave it to me. I honestly don't remember when I got it. Um, I don't know if it's got the date on it. Hmm. I don't know, but it, it's pretty old. Anyway, um, yeah, but I really like the Art Deco style of it. And I don't think it's that old. I don't think it's more of a modern image, but it's yeah, definitely sort of an Art Deco style, but it's really brought to life, I think. Can we see it? Yes, the sort of foil, the gold foiling in it really, just really makes it special. But yeah, so I really love that one. Definitely, it's not going anywhere. Um, yeah, I've never seen anything like it before, so, yeah. So then, back up here, we just got some other Eurographics. Got this, uh, giant 2,000-piece glorious unicorn, ugh, unicorn puzzle with butterflies. Um, I, this is a more recent one. I got it, I think, early last year, so the sort of beginning of becoming a puzzle hoarder, I mean, collector. 
Um, yeah, just really love it. So beautiful. It was definitely really difficult and I don't know when I'm going to do it again. Um, I probably will, but yeah, probably not anytime soon because it kind of fills me with terror having to do all those butterflies and water and unicorns again. So uh, for another day, I guess. And then, yeah, just some of these more modern, recent you know, Eurographics Colors of the World series. So I won't uh, go open them all up, but or pull them out, I should say, but yeah, just the lanterns, the umbrellas, and uh, the cute sort of, well, it's like travel suitcases, but there's some kittens hiding in one, so that's pretty cute. And then back down here, we've just got a couple others that are from like my pretty old collection. This is a Mythic Mazes one, I haven't done it in years. Um, I'm, I honestly can't even remember doing it, but I've, I have definitely done it. I think it was a gift. And yeah, I guess it's one of these ones where the image on the front is probably not the image you do, I guess a bit like Wazjig or whatever, where you do an image that's similar and you have to solve the mystery, I suppose. So yeah, it looks like a sort of wizard's castle type thing. <laughs> looks interesting. Maybe I'll have to give it a go again sometime. And then another one, Map Mysteries, um, Egyptian themed. So yeah, I guess the same kind of deal. Just, you know, you do an image that's not what's on the front and then with clues and stuff you solve a mystery I suppose and then the last couple of things is fairly recent oh it's not that recent maybe from last year this gradient one that I picked up at like a discount bookstore it's just here because it's got this stupid shaped box I don't know it's awkward and it just lives here now and yeah and another look, I put it up the wrong way because like the unicorn puzzle they put the barcode on this side and no, it doesn't look nice, so OCD me has to put it this way and it really rubs me the wrong way. Um, yeah, anyway, so I got this one, I think, in my last puzzle haul, so uh, another addition to the how do you, how do you, how do I pronounce it? Oh my god, uh, how do you Morita puzzles? Um, I think that one would be pretty tough. Yeah, and um, hello sucks. Um, yeah, so now that I've made a big mess, um, that's it for this shelf, but I've got a sort of another shelf and a little bit of puzzles in my dining area near where I film. So we'll go over there and have a look and then that'll be pretty much it for this sort of, uh, for all the areas outside of the spare room. I've, apart from these sort of areas, the spare room is where I've managed to somewhat contain the, the craziness that is my puzzle collection. All right, let's go look at this other shelf then. So we also have one little lonely puzzle over here in the deep dark depths of this uh, gaming shelf behind my my couch. So let's see if I can grab it. I think it's just over here because um, it's just kind of big and it didn't really fit anywhere else and just sort of stayed here. So this is just a really old um, Clementoni 2000 piece puzzle, but it's of the Van Gogh Starry Starry Night. I won't pull it out completely, but you get the idea. But yeah, um, for a long time I thought I was uh, missing a piece, like completed it and there was a piece missing and then uh, a, long, a few years ago we got a new dishwasher and lo and behold the missing piece was under there. So hmm, kitties, thanks for stealing my puzzle piece. So this is where the magic happens. This is in my dining room and I've uh, been doing a bit of decorating for Christmas for some upcoming Christmassy videos. And this is my dining table, which is where you see me film on. Um, it's a bit crowded at the moment. It doubles as my workspace and editing video space um, and also my puzzling space because um, I live in an apartment and the actual study is being used by my husband who also works at home. So things got a little crowded since uh, the start of last year, but we're making it work. And um, yeah, I don't mind puzzling out here. Anyway, so I've got usually got a few, well, a couple puzzles at least to go on the go, and so we've got three here. Got my big puzzle board and my two of my regular 1000 piece ones, and this is my high tech security system um, to protect my puzzles from naughty, sneaky kitties who like to sit on tables and puzzles while you're not looking. Um, so, yeah, the system consists of uh, mainly these, this set of four um, Treat Yo Shelf, which is really hard to say, Amy Stewart puzzles by the 
New Zealand brand Holson. Sorry, I think they're all upside down because I don't really plan this out when I put them down. This one's like the Fantastic Voyage sort of steampunk. Um, this here is a bowl of random miscellaneous items, including my Pusheen Christmas ornament. Um, for the puzzle battle game on Instagram, you have to you get a different object each month that you have to put on your puzzles when you photograph them. So this month it's a Christmas ornament. Um, so there's like a, a garden shelf puzzle. And then this is one of the puzzles I'm working on. And so is this. Well, actually I just finished that one. Puzzle trays. Um, the one, the only puzzle in this collection I haven't done, which is the a Stitch in Time one, which looks really beautiful, but I don't know. I just haven't got around to it. Probably because it's you know, currently being a security system. So, and the wine shelves one. So yeah. And here's another puzzle that I'm working on, the 500 piece Jekko one, which has been interesting to try out a new brand. So yeah, I definitely usually have a couple puzzles going at once. Um, I think I've actually completed, yeah, I've completed two out of three of these and I'm just, one I just haven't got around to putting away yet. And then another one I need to do photos of. It's just really long, it's, it's this one. So yeah, it's just a really long puzzle and it's a bit of a pain to photograph. So I've been procrastinating about it. Um, yeah, so um, let's take a look at a couple other puzzle spots in my dining room. So I've also got this uh, random chair here, which is just basically, I just keep, um, spoilers, upcoming haul puzzles here just to keep them handy. I don't like to put them away until I've actually filmed my puzzle haul. So yeah, it's a bit cluttered, I guess, but uh, no, I mean, it's just my husband and I, and we're not really using this space otherwise. So yeah, so they'll be in the December haul video, so early January, I guess. And then on this bookshelf here, so this is actually, sometimes you might see this lamp, or whatever this is. I've managed to hijack my husband's sort of nerdy Dungeons and Dragons gaming shelf and I've put a bunch of puzzles up here. So I'll grab the step ladder because I'm a shorty and we'll have a quick look at what's up here. Okay, so I'm up here on my step ladder and hopefully I don't die doing this. Um, so this last column of puzzles over here are all Holdson brand. Um, same as the brand I had as my high tech security system. Um, so they tend to do these sort of sets or series. So this is the Renaissance room one and the artwork's really beautiful. Uh, Pomegranate also has, I guess, the rights to this artwork as well. And I can't remember the artist's name, but I think she's Russian from memory. But yeah, it's really beautiful. Um, and I do tend to prefer the pomegranate ones actually. So just the quality is a lot nicer. Unfortunately, Holton do have really beautiful like puzzles in terms of the design and artwork, but the pieces, the quality is just not my favorite. So yeah, so might be decluttering some of these you know, in the upcoming decluttering video. And then we've got the Mistress of Pride Lands um, puzzles as well, which tend to be like these ladies with their t trained giant cats, tigers and leopards and stuff. Kind of cheesy, but it's also just really beautiful. And then I have a random works of art one. So that is a series as well, but I've just got one out of the series. I think I got that uh, close to when I sort of figured I didn't really want to get any more wholesome ones and I just chose just one to get. So yeah, that one might be staying, but we'll see the others might, might get decluttered. I'll we'll have to have a think about it. And then in this middle column, we have a lot of bluebird ones. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the artist's name or the the puzzle name on this side of the box which is a bit frustrating anyway so the first one is I think it's called the clock strikes midnight sort of like a Cinderella inspired Amy Stewart one and then the next one is one I did recently called magical journey which is quite quite a lovely puzzle and then I think the next two are both Amy Stewart's uh, one sort of has like these I think it's like called the golden age of television sort of all these retro television sets on shelves so I guess it's almost like a shelf series one um and then the the bottom one is like a sort of cats being cute and misbehaving in like a haberdashery craft room so very cute and fun and then I've got three of 
this sort of series which are like these very intricate kind of decorated cat ones each is sort of like a different theme um, I can't remember the artist's name but I've definitely seen these done by other puzzle brands too like um, White Mountain and Arrow but yeah they're just really decorative and ornate um, quite difficult too with the borders but yeah really beautiful and at the bottom of this pile I've got a couple puzzles here from uh, Funbox Puzzles which is an Aussie brand um, I don't think they're too old, maybe just a couple years old, I'm not too sure, like, or I only had heard of them in the last couple of years. Um, yeah, their quality's not bad, although their piece fits a little loose, um, and some of their imagery is not my favourite, but I grab these two to sort of try them out and just sort of, yeah, play around with them and see. Um, yeah, so I have yet to do these ones, but I guess at some point they'll get done. And then, this last section here, I've got a few more... Bluebird ones. Uh, these are all Amy Stewart's actually. One's like the greatest show, I think it's called, like a circus one. And then these last two are her like Life is an Open Book, Paris and Venice, which I've definitely seen other brands have these images as well. I think there's like a London and New York one, but I haven't been able to find been able to find them in this series yet. Uh, I mean this brand. And then I've got my um, Anatolian puzzles, which thankfully does have the artist name and the name of the puzzle so i've got here this square one which is like four it's called four seasons and so you get a bit of a close-up of the winter one which looks really cute so i think that'll be fun and then marine to life where it's basically like a um i guess artwork that's come to life i've definitely seen this with other brands too and also a few different varieties in this series i guess by the same artist where i think it's like ducks tigers and things like that coming out of paintings so but yeah I just really I don't know liked the whimsical nature of it and then this one um aptly named named lots of butterflies and yeah just really pretty and then this last one is an Amy Stewart one and it's called Garden Gate I'm not too sure but I think it's either the same or very similar to that holds some one on my table of like the garden shelves like it's very similar or it's part of that image i'm not too sure but yeah they definitely seem to be i remember having another brand a puzzle which almost had like the same image but just like a certain part of it so i guess this image gets around um yeah so that's i think all of my holds in there and bluebird and all except one of my anatolian i've got another one where the box is a bit damaged, unfortunately, so it's, I'm going to try and repair the box. Um, and that's a Christmas one, so we'll see if I can fix that up. But yeah, apart from that, these are the only Anatolian ones I have, but I really like them. Um, so next, let's go on into my spare room. So we're in my spare room, and uh, this is my main puzzle shelves, but uh, it's kind of uh, been outgrown quite a while ago, but it's still a really nice, sturdy bookshelf. And, Yes, uh, definitely outgrown. So I'll get a step ladder in a bit and we'll have a close look at those Cobble Hill ones. But yeah, I have a lot of my Ravensburger ones on here, but I, I have more than this. So we've got some 2000 piece ones, a couple of Amy Stewart's and a couple of Demelsa Horton ones. Um, yeah, I'm not going to pull all these puzzles out. I think you've probably seen a lot before and it will just take so much time. Um, I can't remember like what that sort of spotty round one is but it's really pretty and then I recently did Carnival of Dreams and there's like the origami animals and the cat in Big Ben I don't know if we can see and then I got three of the Colin Thompson cupboard series ones including a Christmas one I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that this year I don't know if I have the time but it does look fun then I've got a pink crypt one which I haven't done yet but I'm excited to see how difficult that one is and then this fun looking artist cabinet and the beach hut and a cute kitty in the puzzler's desk one and then oh some jewelry over there that's what you can see in the background and then um oh sorry i've got a couple of little 500 piece ones up there that one's the quirky circus one which i really like their artwork it's really cool um yeah and then yes, on this row we've got another little 500 Waterlands and we've got a mix of Amy Stewart and other things. So we've got the Christmas Library. I am planning on doing a video for that for Christmas so hopefully I can do that because 
it just looks really like a really nice puzzle just really lovely artwork so yeah I hope I can get to that one um I can't remember what the next one's called it's an underwater at dusk something like that and this sort of majestic lion one um, another some more Amy Stewart ones here so Museum of Wonder Myths and Legends, Fantasy, Fantasy Toy Store, Fantasy Bookshop. Um, yeah, they're all Amy Stewart ones. I'm not sure, sure who the artist of the reading room is, but it looks really nice as well. Um, yeah, I don't know if you've seen that one. Yeah, just cute with the cat and dog in like sort of a library reading room. So, with roller skates. Uh, yeah, it looks fun. And then, yeah, this sort of vintage games one. And then we have another couple of Demelsa Horton ones. Um, I think it's no surprise as to why I got this one. So these pretty rainbow colours and so cute. This little cat. Two cats. Very cute. And then her, I think it's Secret Garden one. And then another one by the, I guess the same artist that was the Underwater Dusk one. This one's really pretty as well, actually. And there's a new one I've been eyeing off, but I haven't seen it here in Australia. It's like two cats. I've only seen it like in the UK, but definitely got my eye on it. It looks very pretty. And then um, these recent ones from this year, um, the Four Seasons and Cherry Blossom Time, and also this, I think it's called Arty Birds. Not sure. Um, yeah, they're very pretty. Uh, I definitely had to get both the cherry blossom time one, like sort of very, you know, speaks to my love of Japan and sort of Asian culture, and and cherry blossoms are just gorgeous. And then, oh, of course, this one as well. Um, I think is this one a Haruyo Morita one. Uh, yes it is, so there you go, I've got, uh, got one by her for Ravensburg, yeah I really like this one, it's very beautiful. And then we actually have some more Ravensburger over here, this is, oh and a random Schmidt one, which that's really pretty. Um, yeah some more Demelsa Horton. Uh, 100 pieces, 500 pieces, and mostly 500 pieces. Um, our British birds and the puffinry, and then some Amy Stewart ones. So, some of her shelf ones like the sweet shop, uh, vintage library, kitchy kitchen, vintage cookbooks, and vintage travel guides. And then this um, Yozakura, that might be by Haruyo Morita as well, actually. And then the Washi Wishes, and I can't remember what that one's called, but it's very pretty. And this um, Piano Cat, I think it's called. And then, I don't know, it's not the Puzzler's Desk, but it's something similar. So a couple of, yeah, 750 pieces there. And this one here, this thousand piece one with the sort of Pegasus on it. That's, I've had that since I was about 13 years old, so quite a while. And I actually got it, I think, in Germany from like a Ravensburger store. And it's glow in the dark. And silly me decided to glue it all together, which was a bit of a fail. So I don't know, it's in a bit of a bad state at the moment. It's sort of in bits and pieces that are still glued together. So one day I might see if I can undo all the bits, but we'll have to see. But yeah, it's very old. And then, yeah, I've still got some other 1000 pieces. Um, Goodness, what else have we got? This potions one, another some more Amy Stewart ones. Um, Birdie Seasons. Oh, that is it Jason Taylor? Naylor? I can't remember. New York one. And this sort of puzzle scene, which was like one of my first ones that I got last year. That sort of part of the crazy uh start to my yeah, what's now like a puzzle horde obsession. Um, and then over here, this is a bit more of the overflow. Um, I have this like random puzzle that I backed in a Kickstarter, like an Australian comic artist. So 
yeah, it looks interesting. And as is the case when you have a lot of puzzles, sometimes you get duplicates. So we've got two of the Ridley's Cat Lovers one, so I'll probably end up either giving one away or selling it or something. And vintage cats and a couple of these sort of whiskey and gin ones. So back over on this, on my shelf, so I've got this shelf here which has a lot of some of my really favourite brands. So on the end here we've got these three, part of the Mental Wealth uh, collection by Modern World Co, which is an Australian brand. So they have each of the puzzles is this head shape. So it's quite a large 1046 pieces. It's a very large shaped puzzle, which is really cool that it's like actually this shape. Um, and each one has like a different, really calming, relaxing image um, inside it. So yeah, really nice, uh, nice quality. Um, I've, I know the owners and they're just really lovely. Um, yeah, so I think it's really cool that they were able to create something so awesome like this. And then we've got here a whole bunch of, well, we've got actually some Grateful House puzzles here from the Dolk collection. Got those hiding up there, which I really love. Like the, I don't know if you've seen the imagery. Let's see if I can get one out. Just uh, yeah, really, really stunning. Yeah, so really love those. Glad I've got my hands on those. And then yeah, these colourful ones. Uh, three different series from One But Many, which is a really great Australian puzzle company. Um, I know the owner as well. We've never met in person, but we definitely have a lot of fun and great conversations on Instagram. So yeah, really, she's a really um, wonderful person. And I think she's just done a fantastic job in creating these and working with like local Australian artists and creatives. Um, yeah, this is like the Natives collection and this was the Summer collection and this is the Home collection. So yeah, I won't pull them all out, but you can see just how fun and colourful they are. And then I've just got here a couple of my Elena Essex puzzles. So the recent Tiger Lounge one and oh, let's see if I can pull this one out. Beautiful Night Reef one. So yeah, so stunning. Uh, not Australian, she's UK, but gotta, you know, put her with some of my favourites. And then coming down here, we have this one from Faye Group, which is by the artist, hang on, Kate, somebody. Nope, nope. Is it Kate Benazi, I think? I haven't done it yet. It looks scary, but it also looks amazing. So one day. Um, so I've got another, got the Bird Paradise Elena Essex one hiding over here. And we've got some of the soonest puzzles um the gradient therapy collection that i just recently did a video on and her couple from her life series i think there's a new one coming up very soon like a snow or ice themed one so looking forward to that and then over here we've got a whole bunch of gallison ones i think this is and like mud puppy i i can guess mud puppy is still gallison i don't know they always, they guess it's by the same company, but cor correct me please if I am wrong. So I've got all of those here. A um, couple more hiding. So yeah, I've done a good chunk of those. Some are still waiting to be done. And then I've got some hiding down there, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, let's see. Well, these are pretty recent from... Uh, some of them, yeah, pretty recent. So we've just got some Buffalo Games ones, which you've probably seen in my puzzle hauls some more oh there's the penny winks puzzle that i did a video on and um that 500 life lessons from uh, jenny and fred and that was in my recent puzzle haul and this birds of paradise one and there's this ula von brandenburg which is pretty cool so i think all of those except penny winks oh no even penny winks have appeared in my um puzzle hauls from the last couple of months and then we have another box of puzzles. Um, so I think you've seen this one before. And also this one, the glow chamber. I don't think you've seen this one. I think this one just came from Amazon, which I saw someone do it and recommend it on Instagram. It comes with these trays too, apparently. But I just thought it looked really pretty. 
and it was quite a reasonable price and a couple of like yeah wooden wooden puzzles um, and then hiding under here we've got we've actually got a very similar one to that Four Seasons from um, Ravensburger also by the same artist Haruo Morita so very pretty very similar but it is different I did check don't worry but I think this is my only bits and pieces puzzle um, I don't know I have mixed feelings about it like definitely beautiful artwork um, I found the quality kind of so-so like a bit of a loose fit from memory and uh, irregular piece cut which is fine but it'd be nice if they weren't sort of loose fit but I don't know so it'd be interesting to try other bits and pieces puzzles to sort of compare see if they're the same or not and then the last one in this box before I move it are these three um, like 3d puzzles so be fun to maybe do a video on one of those sometime but just yeah just 500 piece so three different ones um, and these like really fun La La Land ones so they're pretty cute um, I believe La La Land is an Australian company as well and they don't just make puzzles they make like homewares with like the cute designs on it um, yes yeah, so they're really fun and a couple of uh, Peter Pauper Press puzzles. I haven't done the uniform one yet. I've done the cat one. Um, I was a bit mm, iffy about the quality. Some of the pieces had like a few corner bits that were like a bit too closely cut. So they were kind of coming off and breaking. So might have just been a one-off manufacturing thing. But it does make me hesitant when, you know, if I go to do this unicorn one. So... Yeah, so I'll move this stuff in a second. We'll have a look at this bottom row in a minute. So we're at the bottom of the shelf. I moved those um, other puzzles out of the way. And so first up, I've got a few little Schmidt ones here. Um, well, they're not little, they're 1,000 piece. But yeah, they're all um, Panorama ones. So it's pretty cool. And they're by this artist, Ciro Machetti, maybe. That's how you say it, I don't know. Um, but each one's like a different element. So this one's like sort of your fire element and then there's like a I guess an underwater one an earth one that sort of thing so yeah they're really nice um and then up here I've got a random springbok one which I've never done any springbok ones so I thought that would be fun to do it's a pretty sort of kitsch and tacky looking 1980s cookbook kind of cake um it's a bit in intense looking but um yeah I thought it was nice and colorful and should be fun to do and then I've got here as well, the I think this is all of my Clementoni collection, except for the one I showed much earlier. Um, yeah, so unicorns, um, rainbow gradient, the sort of emoji imposter puzzle, which was really hard and I never really want to do it again. Um, a couple of Japanese ones. This green one is like Japanese matcha, like green tea. Um, so it's kind of a cool image, but I think, yeah, it might be quite difficult. Um, but yeah, I just really, you know, I'm really into Japanese culture, and so this one really appealed to me. And then a lovely Mount... Oh, can we get this back in? There we go. A lovely sort of Mount Fuji in spring. And then um, stamps, which I guess is a bit like the imposter puzzle, so I think that'd be a bit tricky. And then this um, pretty one that I've done before for Clementoni. It's like a lovely, I guess, Japanese garden in autumn. Yeah, really stunning, but it was quite tricky actually, even for a 500 piece, just as you can imagine, all these leaves, quite difficult. And then I've also got these recent colour boom ones, which you probably saw in my last puzzle haul. And then I've got a couple of Suns Out ones. So <sighs> this one is just ridiculous. It's called Bubble Trouble, which is pretty much a good description for for this. I guess it's a bit like an imposter puzzle as well. Like, it's probably going to be really difficult, but I don't know. I couldn't resist. So here we are. And then I have this other um, Suns Out one as well, which I showed in, I think, a couple of hauls ago. Sort of like vintage Mahjong uh, puzzle. So yeah. Quite nice imagery. Um, yeah, I, I, 
kind of don't really understand these strange thin pizza boxes that Sons Out like to use. I don't, they're a bit, they don't feel that strong either. Like, they feel a bit fl sort of flimsy. Um, so yeah, I don't, not a big fan of those, but anyway. Um, but I'll be interested interested to see what the quality of the pieces are like hopefully good but uh, I don't know we'll see anyway so that's pretty much it for this bookshelf except um, in a sec I'll grab the stepladder and we will check out these ones on the top so we're up on the stepladder and this is the majority of my cobble hill puzzles there's a couple on the other side of the room which are pretty new and I just haven't had a chance to put them up here plus I'm like I can't reach any higher actually so, starting off on this side is the rainbow project, so orange, yellow, green, blue, pink, purple. Actually, I end up getting the red one kind of recently, so that's lazily being put over on this side. Because I was like, oh, I don't have time and effort to like, come and like, you know, sort these out. Then I've got this uh, black and white one, which is pretty cool. Um, oh, these are all like uh, Shelley Davies by the artist Shelley Davies, which she does these like really gorgeous uh, collages. So yeah, I really, yeah, really love them. Uh, very pretty. And then I think that one's is that Sewing Notions, I think, another one of hers. Then this, these last two are different. Um, the top one is uh, Hokusai, the Japanese artist who's famous for the Great Wave. So it's like not just the Great Wave, but it's like a whole bunch of his sort of um, works from that era. Well, that series so yeah it's got the great wave but it has a bunch of others too so that's cool because i've done the great wave and it's really hard so having like it broken up into other smaller pictures is a bit more manageable and i got this sort of rainbow quilt one as well which is like i just thought was really lovely unfortunately i can't pull these out to show you because i can't reach them so there's that and then over on this stack these are some of my very first Cobble Hill puzzles, which I discovered um, when I got back into puzzling early last year, so just before the big panini happened. Um, the, what is it? The Cat Library and Library Cat. Library Cat's very tough because um, these are irregular piece shapes and just this massive black fur is like really tricky to do. I know someone else on Instagram who equally had a tough time doing this. And then, of course, we have some more cat ones. I love this one, it's called Furball, hilarious. And this one, Terrarium Cat. I just thought it was so kitsch. And terrariums are so in and hip that I just was like, I love the ridiculous combo. Uh, so I had to get that. And then we have more of these um, Shelley Davies uh, collage puzzles. So these, this time, I don't know if the series has a name, but they're essentially the elements. You've got fire, earth, um, water, and air. And then up here we have, oh, what's this one? Oh, it's called Beach Scene, which is also by Shelley Davies. And just like this lovely sort of beachy shells and all sorts of stuff. So yeah. And then this little 500 piece origami. So I really like origami, I used to make a lot myself. So I have been after that one for quite some time and was super glad when I um, found it online here. So yep. Yeah. And I've got, um, oh, four 2000 piece puzzles. So we've got this one here, which is uh, I've done this one on Instagram not that long ago, also by Shelley Davies. Um, a lovely rainbow gradient collage. So it's quite huge, but yeah, it looks stunning when it's done. Definitely really enjoyed it actually. Just so, like, so many really whimsical, cute little details. Really, yeah, really enjoyed that. And then, yeah, you know, another cat one, a feline bookcase. So, you know, I think that's pretty explanatory. And then this one's pretty cool as well. I think this is, oh yeah, Shelley Davies, vintage art supplies and, sorry, the plastic sort of, um, the plastic joins is running over that. But yeah, that looks like a lot of fun. Um, and then I got Shelley's ABC. That's just an alphabet. Again, sorry, the plastic is running through that. And, it's because I haven't done them yet. And then another cute Shelley Davies one called Catsville. I didn't get the, there's a dog one as well, but I'm a cat person, so I, I got the cat one. 
And it's so, yeah, so cute. I did that one, I really enjoyed it. Just, you know, perfect for any cat lover. And then I got this one recently, which is called Vintage Tins, and it's sort of like all these like tea caddies and things. Um, yeah, just, I don't know, a bit different, I liked it. And then this cute, um, what's it called? Sweet, oh, Sweet Dreams. That was in one of my, I think both of those were in one of my hauls earlier this year. And this one called Koi Pond, which is really lovely. And then, oh, got the last three. Oh, well, okay, so the third one at the, or the one at the bottom is called Dollies, and it's all these different little dolls, like the Russian dolls, Mariushka dolls. And the one in the middle is Tropical Cookies, which I think looks really fun. And then at the top, it's like Barista Art, something like that. Very cute. Um, yeah, so there are a couple of other stray cobble hills floating around, which I'll get to in a bit. But yeah, that's the majority of my cobble hill uh, puzzle collection. Actually, I lie. I You would have seen out in my dining room the chair that has some upcoming puzzles. Um, and there were like quite a few cobble hill in that one too. So don't know where they're going to go, but I guess I'll have to find a place. But yeah, I really enjoy Cobble Hill. Lovely designs. They work with some really great artists. And I like the random cuts. So yeah, lovely quality. So if you thought uh, the other shells had a lot of puzzles, uh -huh. well, uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. I think uh, someone, <coughs> me, has a bit of a puzzle problem. So let's... Um, I guess just start over here. There's not that many in each one of these, or at least not these ones. I think I think these are just one layer deep. So here I've just got um, the playgroup one. So I think one's half tone, one is, I forget, something. One's lenticular and one's something else that's going to mess. Oh, vibrating puzzle. I think that's that, or is it that? I don't know. Something that'll mess up my eyes. Then here's another lovely Australian brand called um, Of Little Things. Um, so they're sort of, uh, not in Sydney, but they're not too far from, from me. And they just, yeah, have these lovely sort of uh, bird uh, puzzles. And the, the owner works with a local Australian artist. Yeah, so just really lovely, whimsical, not bad quality either. And then I've just got this random red one here, which you probably saw in uh, one of my videos recently. Um, just because it didn't fit with the other threads, which we'll get to in a bit. <laughs> the litter box. Um, yeah, so that's it in that one. Then here, I think as well, it's just one layer deep. So I've got here a... I've got my Ebu ones here. So this one here is actually a sort of special puzzle. It was given to me... I sort of won it in Puzzle Battle, but it's called a like Puzzle Panda puzzle. So the idea is I'll complete it, but then I will... When I'm done, I'll like... A little message tag and everything on it and I leave it out in public somewhere for someone else to find and then they can do it and then pass it on just like I did so yeah it's kind of a really nice community concept so it's pretty cool and this is the Troopy Rooster puzzle pretty crazy looking hey Batman so yep I think yes I think we only have yep just one one layer deep because uh, I have some Buffalo Games ones in there some of those are a couple layers deep. And this is the Dracula one and the Alice in Wonderland one that I sort of showed and also talked about recently. There is a mythical map one as well in this series. There's quite a few, I think, like a whole different sort of bunch of literary things and all sorts of stuff. So the Dracula one. Um, but I think I've lent the map one to a friend at the moment. And then up here is my small collection of pomegranates. Um, again, I think, yep, it's just those. And this one that I did recently, I think it's pronounced Heidi. I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, really, really gorgeous artwork. Um, yeah, so I don't know, what have we got here? Just, oh, this is um, by the same artist. There we go. Olga Suvorova, who did the those Renaissance realm puzzles from Holdson. So yeah, they have... There's quite a few out by pomegranate. Um, and then these two are by the same artist, Daniel Merriam, I guess. And then we have 
uh, this lovely one by Eric Vert or, or Wirt, I'm not sure how you say his name. And this beautiful, I guess Japanese garden one, and then another sort of floral one. So yeah, quite like pomegranates, but they're very pricey here, so I kind of just wait till I can get them on sale or things like that. Yeah, but they're really lovely quality, definitely, definitely uh, fantastic quality. And then here I've got, okay, so we've got a couple of Seiko ones, which I've tried out now, and um, yeah, I don't mind the quality, it's not bad. Um, and then a couple of these, what do you call Remarks, 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 okay. Which I think I've showed before, like an ocean one and like a love letter one. And then we have a sneaky Buffalo Games one, probably because I couldn't find anywhere else to put it. Um, Arrow Puzzles, which I believe is an Australian brand. Um, so they also have like this sort of cat's one, like the blue bird puzzles had. Um, yeah, but I definitely like the blue bird puzzle quality a lot better. Um, and they have this like other crazy one. So I'm just gonna, yeah, so I've got a few puzzles behind here, but the, some crazy art ones, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, just, uh, our Kmart here sells, well, they did sell them, they, they seem to have stopped selling crazy art and now just pretty much sell Arrow, but I actually prefer crazy art's quality over Arrow. The Arrow ones are very thin and don't hold together at all. And then I've got a couple of these Aquarius ones, and what else? More crazy art. Oh, that's the empty box to my uh, playgroup 3D sphere. And this is a Charles, I don't know how you say his name, Wisoki? Uh, I'm probably really butchering that, which is, a, this is one from my, like, that I've had for many, many years as well. Very whimsical. I think he does whimsical scenes very well. Um, so I'll just pop those back. So uh, let's have a bit of a look at all these Buffalo Games ones. Got quite a lot of shelves with them on and um, I think as you saw before there's some in other piles too so they're not all here because they just don't fit so got a couple of 1500 piece ones here and um, I think the rest in this oh yeah okay so I've some of these uh, where they fit, I've like sort of, as you can see, it's like uh, double depth, I guess. Is that how you'd call it? I don't know. But I've got a, not all of them are Amy Stewart, but there's a lot. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I just try to keep the ones that I haven't done at the front, although I've done all these ones. So I don't know. I have some sort of chaotic system going, which I can usually figure out which ones I've done and which ones I haven't. Um, yeah. Um, and then down here, we've just got some of the larger piece count ones. Uh, some of these are being pretty fun. Um, I mean, I, I like, I, there's things I like and don't like about Buffalo games. Like, I love that they have such a variety of like really colorful, um, fun artworks. Like, and obviously they have heaps of Amy Stewart. So probably one of the companies that has like the most of her artworks, I guess, that I've seen. Um, but I hate the boxes that you have to like sort of like rip open or cut open it's just so I think it's so messy I mean I think it's good that it saves plastic but I just find to me it feels like now how can I sort of sell them or pass them on to someone else they might like think it's a bit weird um I don't think we really have many puzzles here like that where you sort of have to cut open the box um yeah so not a big fan of that definitely like the ones that have those little sticker seals and I can just open those up but yeah and I you know I find the pieces like the piece quality so so anyway enough rambling um here's some more I think these are pretty much all 1000 pieces as you can see there's more behind there as well and a lot of Amy Stewart ones and then down here we have even more um not as many Amy Stewart's but more of these vivid collection ones some 500 piece ones obviously this there's one missing behind here because I've got it out of my puzzle table at the moment. Um, I don't know what's... Some more? Oh, yeah. Some, oh, some 1,000 piece ones. Another Amy Stewart. So I'm not going to like pull all these out because it would just... We don't have the time. That's a whole nother video. Um, 
And then up here we have some, oh I really like Josie Lewis, like she does these beautiful rainbow artworks. Um, which I think she like actually paints and creates in real life and you can actually buy her artworks but then they turn the image into puzzles so yeah really cool. Um, let's see, I think there's some more 500s. Yeah some like other things, so I've been getting quite a few 500 piece ones lately just because I don't know there's a lot of cool designs and they're fun to do and I've sort of I guess not on purpose um, so behind there there seems to be some thousand piece ones but yeah as you can see I seem to have acquired a lot of these uh, cat series ones I'm definitely not going out of my way to collect every single one I, I mean I'm not a fan of every single one they're all by different artists um, so I only pick the ones that I really like but I still have ended up with quite a lot but you know I just think they're really cute like just I've definitely seen like this image and some of the others on other puzzle brands as well so clearly they're not necessarily exclusive to Buffalo Games but I think that goes for a lot of their puzzles um, but yeah and then here we've got a bit of a mix so we've got some Buffalo Games but then we're actually going into well more cat puzzles but they're by Masterpieces and same with this like um, what do you call it oh, what's Okay, what's this famous, uh, help, anyone? Nope. Oh, that's it. Dowdle. That's what I was trying to think of. Sorry. That was, yeah, it took a while to get there. Um, yeah, so just a few masterpieces, ones that are sort of picked up here and there. I think they have some cool designs. And, oh, some Fred ones hiding back there. Hello. Hey, Fred. Just some 500 piece ones. Um, so, I think that's the majority of the Buffalo Games ones. I think everything else is a bit, a little bit miscellaneous. But, um, we'll have a little, quick look through them. And, yeah. So, these shelves have kind of random stuff in. This one's got those, um, ones with like those neon flamingos, which I sort of showed recently on my, in one of my videos. Um, and then what else do we have? Some Lego puzzles. These beautiful ones from, uh, they're called, what are they called? Oh, the company's called, oh, Pico Olo, and they're a Malaysian brand. And they're really interesting because they're sort of this soft plastic, but the pieces still snap together nicely. So yeah, really cool and really nice designs. So I really like them. Definitely recommend them. Um, and there's an Anamorphia one back there and something else. I don't know what, but it's going to stay a mystery. Because I can't reach right now. And then over here we just sort of got a random mix. Some Hinkler ones, which I'm pretty sure is an Australian brand. This one on the end is scented, which is pretty cool. It's like very pepperminty. And then a couple of like Pusheen puzzles. I think that's it for, yeah, there's nothing back behind there. Um... Yeah, so they've just, yeah, cat one, um, that, uh, Klimt one was like a three panel one, really beautiful, but pretty tricky as you can probably imagine. And then over here, we just have a whole bunch of genuine Fred ones. And as you can see, I've got quite a few and, um, they're definitely not all fitting in there now, but yeah, I really like genuine Fred. They have like pretty good quality and just a really cool range of images. Um, so in a sec we will come down here and have a look at all these ones. Okay, so let's check out these couple of miscellaneous piles. Um, so there's the other couple of Cobble Hill ones. There's these, um, I forget what the brand is, but they're by this artist Jared Mariyama and this one's a collaboration with him and someone else. But yeah, he does these like very kawaii, colourful, very cutesy uh, puzzles with like very cute characters and the other weird thing with these puzzles is well it's kind of I don't know if it's weird but it's interesting they have like this black backing um, like not a backing paper like the board itself is black so really interesting and the pieces also feel kind of heavier than normal cardboard so yeah don't know what that's about but very very different um, there's my Melbourne map puzzle um, I lied, there is actually another Clementoni puzzle, I think it just didn't fit in the other bookshelf, so end up here. Um, 
This is, yeah, from the Color Boom series, 2000 piece. This one was pretty tricky to do. Although I was trying to rush it. Um, I don't know why. Just trying to get it done for Puzzle Battle or something. And, yeah, it was really difficult and pretty stressful. And not a super enjoyable experience. But I think if I was going to do it again, I'll probably give myself a bit more time. And then maybe it'll be more fun. And there's the infamous 5000 piece colourful gradient underneath it. So, don't know when that's going to happen. Kind of tempted to do a video series on it. I'll have a think about it. Uh, not this year, but sometime next year, I guess. And then over here at the very bottom, we have the Seeing Stars sort of zodiac puzzle. Then this tea set one by the company Willow Creek. And the box actually came damaged like that, which was a bit of a, well, pretty annoying. But, you know, I'm not surprised because the box itself is very flimsy. Overall, I'm pretty unhappy with the quality of that puzzle um even the pieces the like image on the pieces was cracking i guess like the paper whatever paper they used to print the image on was just just breaks and cracks really easily so yeah pretty disappointing don't can't say i'm going to get any more by that brand um i feel a bit scarred to be honest anyway there's a better co one above that which hopefully is nice quality and then this cactus one from antelope um a couple more from recess which is by this artist who does like those sort of dark dark themed simpsons ones then these beautiful um illustrated ones like the bestiary and then, don't get me started on how to say these i have no idea but they're just yeah really stunning illustrations we have got a simpsons one care bears one um this beautiful colorful dreamland by hattie hattie stewart i think and this random sort of like, sorry, my big hand in the way. Um, it's from the our store typo here. I don't know if you have that where you are, it's sort of like stationery and knickknacks. Um, but yeah, I got that as a gift from a friend, so it looks pretty funny. It looks pretty hard though. So I don't know when that's going to happen. Um, yeah, so that's it for those two piles. Um, so we'll come over here and have a look at the rest. So these last two piles here are bit more organized we've got some tilbury and more tilbury truffle and hay i think it's hay or is it hay yay hay so tilbury i think is an australian brand i sort of only noticed this brand only in the last year or so so i don't know if they've newly created um but yeah there's some cool uh, images like this 80s one and ridiculously cute cat ones um and the price point's pretty reasonable here in Australia, like cheaper than Ravensburger. And yeah, doing one, I realised that the pieces seem to be the same as the Clementoni ones, like pretty much identical. So I'm guessing they must have the same manufacturer or something. Um, yeah, it's sort of like not bad quality, but very loose. And then sort of has these distinct rounded edge corner pieces. Then there's all these ones from Hay. These like Pixarama ones by eBoy. So we've got London, Berlin, New York. And then these like, is it John Bergman? He does these like colorful doodle monsters. They're very like fun. Yeah, and it's really silly and fun. And then I've got this sort of 2000 piece quirky world map. But I think the artist or art team's called Quirky Circus, because they're the same ones that did that little 500 piece European map by Ravensburger. And then I've got a bunch of truffle ones here. Um, lots of cat ones. Oh, that's a Mona Lisa one. She's holding a cat, so that makes the picture a lot better. Funny Cities ones. Um, just sort of like these still life ones. I'm not sure, like, with these ones, I'll probably, like, maybe just do them once and then maybe sell them or donate them or something like that. Um, depending on what the quality's like, I can't see myself. Like, I'm not in fully in love with some of these images. I think the Mona Lisa cat one has to stay, but the other ones, I'm like, hmm, you know, I don't know. We'll see. I'll have to think about it. And then I have a little, tiny little pile here with some of those Jekko ones. Another little cat truffle one and this hilarious Aquarius sausage dog one. So I think that's everything that's in front of, like, that's in front of or in 
these shelves over here. Ooh, so many. I yeah, even I get surprised sometimes and overwhelmed by how many puzzles I have. Um, I've just got a tiny. Well, okay, I wouldn't say tiny. We just have two more stacks to go, and then we'll be done. Hooray! So just when you thought there couldn't be any more Ravensburger, well, there is. So yeah, but I, I promise this is the last stack. Um, hello, miss. Please don't look at that. Yeah, basically, some of these I've done and some are fairly new. So we got some Colin Thompson ones, cute cat one, a bit of like this birdhouse one. Oh, the two crypt ones, which were pretty difficult. Um, don't know if I'm going to do those again, to be perfectly honest. They weren't that fun. Plus I've got the pink one to try and I've got the rainbow gradient one coming up, which I actually really enjoyed. This sort of New York City apartment one, which was fun. I really liked this sort of insects and um, butterflies one. Like it's really pretty. And this one was, yeah, some of these ones are quite new. Like I think they only come out this year. So yeah, pretty fun. Um, wild you and this like, Exotic Escape and Amazing Birds one. Uh, my Arch Nemesis Glitter. Uh, that was tough. I definitely want to hold on to it. I don't know why, just to torture myself probably, but yeah, definitely definitely was a tough challenge. Whereas the Rainbow Gradient Crypt was a lot more fun and easy. And then we've got a few newer ones like the Marvelous Moths and Butterflies and yeah. And then uh, this sort of Rainbow Gradient Cottage Garden one. And my first and I think only Disney puzzle, so yeah. And then over here we have mostly most of my um, cloudberries. Although we have at the very bottom a, a kitty cat Gibson's one, which I got quite a while ago. Um, I think beginning of last year. Again, one of my sort of first puzzles again when starting to get into this puzzle collecting obsession. Um, but yeah, so we've got quite a few collaborators, the flowers one, poolside, hands, crystals, botany, dreamscape, epicurean, skyline, chromatic, and origami. And then on top we have this beautiful Gibson's one that, Gibson one that I got not that long ago. Gosh, I can't speak anymore. Just really pretty see through nature yeah just really like it I don't know why this box is smaller size to the one at the bottom maybe one is like oh I think I know why I think actually this one here is like they call it their white label so it's a bit more I don't know if it's more fancy or more adult sort of a bit more mature I'm not sure whereas you know like this one's a sort of ordinary one I think that's the case um, so yeah, maybe the blue ones are more like whimsical or suited for kids or something. I'm not too sure. Uh, but yeah, so that is everything, I believe. Um, there are a few I haven't shown that, um, like there was that little, um, there's that little Kickstarter I got for odd pieces. That's in a little box around here somewhere. But I just showed that in a puzzle haul. Um, and I've also like got a bunch of puzzles that I've put aside to for decluttering. So I'll probably save those because I'm going to find a whole lot more to declutter as well. And then I'll probably do a video on that early in the new year. So I guess stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, so I hope you enjoyed my bonkers uh, collection. So that brings us to the end of my puzzle collection tour, I guess. That was quite a lot of puzzles to get through and I, I think I have a fairly big collection. Um, I'm actually thinking of doing a bit of a puzzle decluttering video, maybe early in the new year. Um, I just feel like I have quite a few puzzles that maybe I can sort of let go of that I don't think I would do again or maybe I don't like them as much as I once did. So I think that would be a good opportunity to sort of freshen up my collection and maybe even make room for new puzzles. So um, I guess, yeah, let me know what you thought of my collection. Um, and also let me know what your collection's like. Do you have a big collection or a small one? Um, I know some people 
collect like certain brands like Wasjig or Ravensburg. I've definitely seen on Instagram someone had a very impressive Ravensburger collection and I don't think they collected much else. So maybe you're like that where you really love a certain brand or type of puzzle. Um, yeah, so I guess in the comments below, let me know your thoughts and your experience and all about your puzzle collection. So thanks so much for following along today and watching the video. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can keep up to date with all things puzzles. And for even more puzzle content, you can check me out over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.